Welcome to the afterlife, also known as Death Incorporated, a cartoonistic underworld that deals in the business of collecting souls. My name is Soju from the Straight Chilling Podcast, and today I'll be reviewing Have a Nice Death for the Nintendo Switch from 2023. The art style of Have a Nice Death does a fantastic job of setting a fun-loving, spooky mood throughout the game. It is a cutesy hand-drawn art style with splashes of Tim Burton aesthetic and design. The player takes control of Death, a Grim Reaper style character who is portrayed as an overworked CEO who is desperate to take a break from the corporate underworld. Each level of the game is divided into departments, and each department has a unique death-inspired theme that is filled with its own theme-appropriate enemies. Some of the departments throughout the game include the Toxic Food Processing Department, the Addictions Department, the Physical Illness Department, and the Industrial Pollution Department. The environments are a nice blend of corporate structures featuring gothic aesthetics, as if Tim Burton had directed an episode of The Office. All of the bosses, known as Sorrows, also match the theme of their own departments and are often cleverly designed and depicted with the perfect blend of light-hearted and morbid flavors. For instance, the Sorrow at the head of the physical illness department is depicted as a giant crab covered in tumors, which is to represent the idea of cancer. Overall, the art stylings of Have a Nice Death are a huge highlight of the game and did a lot to carry the overall enjoyment for me. At its core, Have a Nice Death is a game about dying. A lot. This game is based around fast-paced action, but in a lot of ways plays out like a game of cards. Because of its roguelike nature, progression is erased after each death. That means that at the beginning of each run, the player is completely unaware of what kind of weapons, spells, and strategies they will be able to utilize. The player will start off with some kind of scythe weapon, but even which variation is never clear until the game begins. As the player progresses, they will be given certain secondary weapons and spells, but again, completely at random. While the game offers a wide variety in the secondary weapons, I found that I could go 15 to 20 runs without seeing the same spells twice, which meant that I never felt like I got a lot of time to perfect my playstyle with that spell before it was taken away. Additionally, the player will gain power-ups in the form of curses, which are cards that can give you bonuses towards attack, defense, or spellcasting. In this way, Have a Nice Death is often about choosing between risk and reward. Even the progression between the departments gives you a choice in which floors you can choose, which means the player will have to decide between prioritizing things like currency, health, and potential power-ups. All of these power-ups are really just leading up to the truly exciting part of the game, which is the boss battles. As you reach the end of each department, you are faced with a sorrow with its own unique group of move sets that require precise timing and study to overcome. There's also a good variety of mini bosses that in some ways carry more difficulty than the department heads. Overall, this quick paced action is exciting and the spells feel powerful and rewarding, but the gameplay is punishing and can require quite a bit of patience to effectively progress through the game. There is enough story and dialogue in Have a Nice Death to be charming, but ultimately unimportant. While it can be said that each character does have some kind of motivation and personality, it is only surface level and doesn't do much to add to the overall gameplay. Essentially, Death feels overworked, and in his absence, the department heads of Death Incorporated seek to overthrow him. Death must move through the departments and put each department head back in their place. Luckily for anyone seeking a bit more depth or personality from this game, you definitely can if you take the time to patiently wade through all the dialogue of each character. However, it is completely unnecessary and really just seems to build up more of the playful nature of the game versus adding any kind of real deep lore. The soundtrack, however, was a very enjoyable aspect of the game. 
The catchy elevator music is the perfect way to handle a loading screen, and I loved how each department and department head featured their own unique soundtrack. The only one that actually bothered me in a negative way was the sound design for the addictions department, which was a little too shrill and unsettling. Overall though, I think the sound design on this game is definitely one of the highlights and has left me with several memorable moments and jingles that will help to cement this game experience in my mind long after I set down the controller. Unfortunately, the negatives of Have a Nice Death seem to increase the more you play the game. For one, the version for Nintendo Switch has a really bad habit of lagging, especially if you have a tendency to place your Switch in sleep mode. This can be pretty detrimental to a game that relies on fast-paced action gameplay and precise timing to defeat the bosses. I found that I often had to reset my Switch just to get the game to run smoothly. The gameplay itself is also too random and too punishing. While I did find a lot of the spells and weapons rewarding to use, I just couldn't find the patience to play through uncountable run-throughs just to find one of my favorite spells again. The chance of dying in this game is great, and it just hurts my overall enjoyment to know that I might not ever be able to use the same character build again. I also found the game to be quite stingy in its distribution of health. I felt like I was always watching the health meter, and even the smallest, most basic enemies can cause a large portion of damage, which always leaves the player in a desperate state leading up to the boss fights. These mechanics seem more like a gimmick to stretch out the limited content versus creating an actual fair gameplay. As the player dies, the game begins to feel too repetitive. If I truly wish to progress, I feel like I need to go over the same levels again and again just to get enough power-ups to hopefully move past the next boss. Ultimately, I get tired of going through the Hall of Eternity again and again, and I'm sick of facing Brad for the millionth time. Overall, I'm giving Have a Nice Death a 3.5 out of 5. This game is fun to pick up, and I love the art style, fast-paced action, boss battles, and designs. I also think this is a great game to play during the Halloween season and is definitely one I will be coming back to in the autumn. If you've played through Have a Nice Death, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to get some weekly horror content from the Straight Chilling Podcast. And until next time, don't forget to keep chilling.